I want to pray that the Lord will enrich your life today with this Bible study. That the Lord will grant you the spirit of understanding. And that what you understand in the word will build you up. Strengthen you. Make you the kind of Christian or the kind of committed conqueror you ought to be. I thought you all pray. The Bible study will not be study as usual. You follow through with your mind, with your heart. And the Lord will strengthen your conviction in the word of the Lord. That you will be a dependable Christian, a faithful Christian. And the Lord will depend on you to pass the word on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to go to Ikeja. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, because you always gather us together every week like this to feast at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you because your spirit is present. And we know that your power is present too. We pray, Lord, that you grant us light into the word, even tonight in Jesus' name. We pray that you strengthen our backbone. You strengthen our spirit. And you strengthen our inner man. That, Lord, as we study your word, we'll become stronger. And we'll become more faithful in the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray it will not be like the dog that the water just passes on and there's no effect of the water on the dog. But that this word, the water of life and the bread of life will give strength to everyone in Jesus' name. That day after day will be going stronger and stronger. Going higher and higher from the impact of the study of your word in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I welcome you to our Bible study tonight. Always a joy uh, to gather around the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word personified, and then for Him to reveal His mind, His truth, His Word unto us. And um, I see Himself said that the flesh profited nothing, but the Word that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. And I pray that the spirit in the world and the life in the world will work mightily in every one of us in Jesus' name. But also are joining us for the first time, we are studying from the epistle general of Jude. And we've explained uh, that Jude was actually one of the sons of Mary. And that means that he'll be a half-brother to the Lord Jesus Christ. But as we come to Jude, look at it, it's only one chapter. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James. He introduced himself, not as the half-brother, not that we share anything in the flesh. You know why? Because after Jesus rose from the dead, those are brothers of Jesus and the half-sisters of Jesus. They understood that this is not just flesh like us, that this is the Son of God, this is Supreme One, this is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and then they forgot about the human relationship. 
and the fleshly relationship. And now he says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. And then he tells us about the people he's writing to. He's writing to us, he says, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. There are three things there. Number one, they are called. Many are called, but few are chosen. And those who repent and turn away from their sins and return to the Savior to be the Lord of their lives and to be the director, the controller of their lives and now by the power of the grace of God because of Calvary, they are saved, they are born again, they are children of God. It calls them number one, the called. Not only that, it calls them the sanctified. Those are the people, they have been saved. And because they are saved, their outward sins, external life, had been totally turned around. The sins were forgiven. They were children of God, but they went further and they got more of the grace of God. And they were sanctified, they were purified, and they were cleansed on the inside. And uh, the apostle, he realized that, and he said, you are called, you are converted. You are consecrated and you are sanctified and now you are preserved. There are many people that come in and then they fade away. We can't see them anymore. The goodness or the righteousness or the Christian experience is like the dew in the morning. And the sun rises up and then everything is dried up. But he says these ones are preserved. Thank God I am called. And thank God I am sanctified. And thank God I am preserved. And the Lord will keep on preserving us in Jesus' name. Now he talks about uh, what got us in. Look at verse 2. It says, uh, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. You know, the language doesn't say that, you know, you're just getting it for the first time. It says, it be multiplied. The mercy that saved you. And the peace of God that you had, and the love of God that came to your life. Because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He says that mercy of God, the mercy that saves, and the mercy that forgives, and the mercy that brings us as children into the kingdom of God. It says it will be multiplied in your life. And in the peace of God, we are peace with God. And we are peace with one another. We are peace in our hearts. And we are peace in the family. And we are peace in the church. And we are peace that leads us on. And therefore we are resting in the Lord. Peaceful in the Lord. It says that peace too be multiplied. What could you be? What could you do without the peace of God flowing in your heart? Then it comes to number three. And it says there is manifold love. And it says that love to the love of God. The love of God. That it will be multiplied in your heart. Now he has something serious to tell us. Look at verse 3. It says, Beloved, the people who are called, beloved, the people who are chosen, beloved, the people who are following after the Lord, beloved, the people who are sanctified, the people who are purified, the people who have a conspicuous place in the kingdom of God, he calls them beloved, and the people who are preserved, these are not backsliders, but he's warning them. He says, Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, what does that mean? Of the universal salvation, of the salvation that's available for everyone, of the salvation that's appeared unto all men, of the salvation for the white and the black, of the salvation for the Jew and the Gentile, of the salvation for the young and the old, of the salvation that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, I give all dignity right unto you of that common universal salvation. Then it said it was necessary. I found it necessary. That I will exhort you that ye should honestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now it's coming to something very serious. It was serious at that time. And it is still serious today. And it will be more serious at the close of the age when Christ is about to come. Why? Look at verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Who were before ordained of old to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, saying that there is danger here. 
He's saying there is something you need to watch here. He said there are certain men, actually certain ministers, certain preachers, certain prophets, certain teachers, the people that were false, and then they were proclaiming themselves to be truthful. And he said they crept in. They didn't come through the door like reptiles. They came in and they crept in. And it says they are ungodly men. Their doctrine is ungodly. Their lifestyle is ungodly. Their influence is ungodly. Their impact is ungodly. And their decisions are ungodly. And their passion ungodly. And their purpose ungodly. He said they are ungodly men. And they have turned the grace of God, the goodness of God. They turn that to lasciviousness. That he said they turn it to habitual sinning. They say, well, God will forgive. They say, God is good. They say, God is love. They said, God cannot throw anybody into hell. They say, God cannot just judge somebody. It's a God of love. It's a God of grace. And they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. He said, they now deny the only Lord God that bought them. They deny his justice, and they deny his righteousness, and they deny his nature, and they deny his character, and they deny everything that we know about God and about Christ. Therefore, he says, I will therefore, therefore, put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people, out of the land of Egypt, after what destroyed them that believed not, is saying that, well, don't listen to those people. Remember what happened in the past? After the Lord had saved those people from Egypt, the people that turned back and the people that backslid and they were perpetual backsliding and they will not return to the Lord. He said they were not able to get to the land of Canaan because they were destroyed in the wilderness. Look at verse 6. Here. And the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation. As you reserve in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. You see here, a Jude was warning the people and was saying, Judgment is real. The perdition of the people that turned back away from the Lord and they will not return to the Lord, that is real. And he said, Now I'm reminding even the angels, the angels that did not keep their estate, and did not keep the original nature, and did not keep the privileges that God had given them, he said, They are now reserved in chase, even forever. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah think about that, he's talking about angels that were in heaven. Now he's talking about a people people that are here on earth, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, they are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And, and so you see what the Lord is teaching us here, and what the Lord is revealing to us. Actually, the apostle now is, uh, you know, becoming like a watchman, a watchman. You know, an evangelist ought to be a watchman, an apostle ought to be a watchman, a prophet has to be a watchman, a pastor has to be a watchman, a teacher of the word has to be a watchman. And here he comes to teach us. Here he comes to warn us. Here he comes to direct us. And he acts like a watchman, and he says, beware, because... There is danger. Actually, Peter the Apostle has spoken about this. But what's the difference between uh, Second Peter and Jude? Peter said, they are coming. They are coming. All those deceivers, he said, I see them coming. John, the beloved, has also spoken about them. He said, they are coming. They are coming. And Jude said, they are here. Those deceivers, they are not far away over there in a foreign land. And they are not far away over there in another country. He said, they are here. That's why he said, beloved, I'm warning you. Tonight we are looking at an urgent call to watchfulness. An urgent call to watchfulness. There are three things we are looking at. Number one, deteriorating deceivers denounced with false prophets. Deceivers they are, but they deteriorate. They go from bad to worse. They go from one level of evil to a deeper, greater, more dangerous level of evil. Deteriorating deceivers denounced with false prophets. Number two, depraved 
deserters damned for filthy perversion. Depraved deserters, those who desert, that is, they've been here, they've been in grace, they've been in the favor of God. They had the first estate, the estate of righteousness and the estate of holiness. Those were the angels, they were holy. And then he talks about the children of Israel. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. They were saved. And then he talks about the Sodomites. They could have had the mercy of God. But these people, they deserted the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the greatness of God. And then they were damned as filthy perverts. Number three, they filed the spices defiant against fundamental pillars fundamental pillars there are pillars of faith fundamental the f pillars in the assembly fundamental there are pillars in the kingdom of god fundamental there are pillars in the theocratic government of god pillars fundamental pillars but there are people that are despisers of those fundamental pillars and it talks about the files despisers, defiant against fundamental pillars. We're coming to number one. Number one, tell me out there. Deteriorating deceivers denounced were false prophets. I'm looking at Jude, one chapter, chapter one. Look at verse four. It says, for there are certain men, for there are certain ministers, for there are certain preachers, for there are certain officers. Uh, that's what they call themselves, officers of the church, were ministers of the church, and we are great men in the church. For there are certain men crept in unawares, crept in unawares. They creep in and you don't notice. They come in and you don't notice. They perpetrate their evil and you don't notice because they do it so quietly. They do it so surreptitiously. And they do it in such a subtle manner. They do it in such a way you cannot notice. And Jude is telling us, don't think that they are going to make a loud noise and announce we are false prophets who are here, want to confuse everybody and want to destroy the church and will want to scatter. You no, know, they, they don't say that. And they do not make any announcement because they come in unawares. They crept in unawares who were before of old or to this condemnation. What does that mean? It means that the Lord knew that they were coming. Even Jesus Christ said, there are people that will come and will say, I am the Christ. And they will deceive the people. Many will follow the pernicious ways. And so, the Lord already knew it was prophesied, predicted that they will come. And then he calls them ungodly men ungodly men they don't have the grace of god in their lives that's why you don't just follow anybody that person is preaching i'm running after him that person is making an, an evangelistic a campaign i'm following after him that woman is uh, you know announcing that you know she belongs to the lord she's seen a vision i'm following her it says they're ungodly look at their lives look at their character look at their behavior and look at the impute and the impact of their lives it says these ungodly men and it turned the grace of God into, tell me, lasciviousness, turning the grace of God into habitual sinning, continual sinning, and they justify the sin. And they say, you know, God is a good God, and it doesn't really matter what you do. And they tell you, I don't have any guilty conscience. I don't have any qualms about this at all. I do this. You think they are wrong. And, uh, you know, people say they are wrong. But, you know, I don't feel any guilt about it. Their conscience is dead. Their heart is dead. And there's no life in them at all. And these are people that will say, since I don't have any guilt, since I don't have any condemnation, I'm all right. I feel all right. The things I do, they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you see, if they were saved, they should have understood. Look at Second Peter. We're looking at Second Peter here, and we're looking at uh, chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. It says in verse one, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. There shall be. 
was still in the future. They had not come at that time. At least they had not really come out in the open like uh, Jude eventually saw them. Who privilege shall, uh, that's future, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that, tell me, tell me out loud. But then they were saved. They were saved before. They knew the Lord before. They knew what it meant to be purchased and bought and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But now it says they've gone astray. They're backsliding. And they remain in that backsliding. And then they bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow the pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness. That's it, the love of money. And through covetousness, that's it, the love of luxury. And through covetousness, that's it, they want to live on the resources of other people. And through covetousness shall they within words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. And so you find there are, you know, evil people, and they deteriorate. Look at Second Timothy. Timothy chapter 3 verse 13. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 13. Once somebody goes on that slippery road of backsliding and then he doesn't care, he doesn't run back into the kingdom of God immediately, that road is so slippery they'll be going from one level to another, one level to another until there is no way to recover them again. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 3. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Evil men, backsliders, they wax worse and worse. You know, you see them today, they're worse today than the one last year when you saw them last. And you hear the language, and you see their appearance, and you see their behavior, they're worse today. It looks like they've gone for training to be evil, to be more evil, more evil than they were before. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. But thank God I will continue in the word of God. Look at verse 40, but continue thou. The other backsliders are backsliding, but continue thou. Deceivers are deceiving, but continue thou. And the people that are evil are waxing worse and worse, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I will continue. I will continue in the Lord. You see, the people that do not continue, once you slide back, once, once you let go, your gut, and once you let go, the gate, you're not closing the gate to the devil and to the tempters. You know, it will be going from one level of evil to the other. In Second Chronicles chapter 33, Second Chronicles chapter 33, we're looking at an example of a man that once was and went down and down and down and down. Until almost there was no remedy. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 33. And we're looking at verse 9. It says, So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err. Not only that he erred. Not only that he backslid. Not only that he did evil. He made other people also to err. And to do worse than the heathen. Think about that. Somebody in Israel. Somebody in Judah. Somebody who should have known God. Somebody whose the grace of God had been made available and revealed. And he made the people do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Manasseh and to his people. Tell me what follows there. Tell me out loud. You think that because they come to the Bible study, they would be convicted, they'll be converted, they'll turn back to the Lord. But the Lord spake unto them. The Lord spoke unto them. He said, this is not good. This is backsliding. This is evil. This is the way to hell. And it still continued in their evil and they would not hack him. You will not be like that. 
these people came in unawares. That's what we read in June. What does that mean? They came in unawares. Look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. We're reading here from verse 25. Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. It tells us over here that uh, the Lord was uh, giving a teaching, a parable. He said, but while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tires among the wheat and went his way. While men slept. You know what that means? The men that those are ministers, those are the preachers, those are the pastors, those are the counselors, those are the teachers of the word of God. While ministers sleep, the enemy will come and they creep in surreptitiously. They creep in in a subtle manner. They creep in in a way nobody will notice them. And then they sold those tears among the people of God. The seed of backsliding and the seed of evil and the seed of perdition. They saw all that while men slept. And that doesn't mean that we're not preaching. Yes, we're preaching, but we're sleeping. We're preaching, but we're not watching. We're preaching, but we're not watching what our people are reading. We're not watching where people are going. We're not watching whether our people are standing or not. We're not watching whether we're still standing firmly on the conviction of the word of God. While men slept, the enemy came. Look at this in verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. When they creep in like that and they sow that bad seed, it doesn't appear the first day, the first week, even the first month, even the first year. They keep on sowing that evil, that evil, until everything will then come up. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then as it tears? And he said unto them, Tell me. Tell me out loud. You would think they were workers. An enemy has done this. The people that sow any seed contrary to the seed of truth, contrary to the doctrine of the Bible, and contrary to the way of life that leads us to heaven, these people that creep in, and then the ungodly men, ungodly women, ungodly members, and then they sow the seed of evil, and they go their way, and then the people, they take after the false erroneous seed, and the evil seed, and the example that these people, that they have sown. And then you say, but we're preaching sound doctrine here. You say, but we're teaching the truth over here. Yes, we're teaching the truth, but while men slept, while ministers slept, and while the pastors slept, the enemy came through these people, and so the tires among them. I pray the Lord will purge his church. The Lord will purify his church. That's the reason why you see anybody distributing a kind of tract. Where did you get this one? Don't worry about that. Just uh, read this. You say, no, I will not read it. Look, this is erroneous. This is terrible. And then they give you a tape over there. They give you a CD over there. And they give you something. They say, come and look at this. And then they open the internet. I saw somebody on the internet. You know what he said? He said that, you know, you can get to heaven without holiness. And he can prove it to you. And, and they man can talk and he spoke convincingly now i understand you know all you have been saying without holiness no man shall say the lord you know i now know something better don't listen to them not only that you're not listening to them you report them you expose them because those are the men and those are the women and those are the deceivers that creep in unawares and then they destroy the value of the grace of god you will not harbor them you will not hide them. You will not accommodate them. You will not encourage them. Because while men slept, the evil people came in and they sowed their tears. You, you know, sometimes it happens in our families. And uh, please, if this affects you, pardon me. I'm just, uh, you know, I need to give illustration of the word of God. I don't have anybody in mind. But you know, sometimes you're training your boy. You're training your child. And you read, you read the Bible. You have quiet time. Everything appears to be okay. And you don't check up anything. And then they're in their rooms. You know, you give them all 
want the liberty you give liberty to the teenager and you give all the you know whatever it is freedom to the teenagers and then eventually somebody they wrote to you from the college and they said that you know your boy is uh, having some things in the brain and then you go there, the boy is wild. You know, that cannot be my child. Because we always have quiet time. This boy is the most spiritual in our family. And whenever we have a quiet time, the boy will tell you about the Bible, will interpret the Bible. He's the priest in our family. He's a pastor in our family. But the boy has now gone into smoking marijuana. And then you are surprised. How did this happen? Because you only have quiet time. You didn't check up the room. And when those other boys were deceiving the fellow, you didn't check up. You just thought everything is all right. Has it not happened to your daughter, somebody's daughter, that you said, this daughter, I'm telling this one is the angel in the family. This one is the most holy, the most righteous in the family. And then all of a sudden, or see something, I say, my daughter, what am I seeing in your tummy? Uh, actually, I wanted to tell you. I didn't know I would tell you. What do you want to tell me? The girl is pregnant. Ah. And the angel of the family, and the most righteous in the family, while men slept. Well, you know, we were reading Bible, we're going here, we're going there. I belong to the choir. I belong to this area. I belong to this area. We're not checking up at home what is happening. And we just leave them like that. And then eventually everything turned upside down. I pray that as we have not been watching from now, we'll be watching in Jesus' name. I said we'll be watching in Jesus' name. You know, pardon me, I don't want to upset anyone, but you know what? You know, I see some uh, sisters, you know, my husband is a Christian, my husband is a Christian. Praise the Lord, your husband is a Christian. And you know, my husband, even if uh, Delilah came like this and presented herself, I know my husband. Uh -huh. I'm happy you know your husband. While women slept, the devil came and took their husband and said, look at something. You think a man like that were power. A man like that, that was in the prophecy of his birth, was there before he was born. And, uh, you know, the father, the father and the mother, uh, they just said, when he said, I'm going over there, I'm going to get a, a, a wife. Or, they said, have you not found somebody here? They just talked madly. Nobody followed him to say, you can't do that. You won't do do that. We won't allow you to you are the judge of Israel. You are the number one in the land. You cannot do this. They just left him alone. He slept outside the family. They didn't mind. When last did your husband come back home to sleep at the right time? From work goes to this, go to this. Where have you gone, my husband? Why are you asking me? Don't you trust me? Don't you know me? I brought you to the church. I was saved before you were saved. I was sanctified before you were saved. Uh -huh. Story, story. Don't tell me story. Where have you been going? Eventually, look at what happened to Samson. It will not happen to you. But you must be watching. And your wife must be watching over you. And your husband must be watching over you. And the ministers, the pastors must be watching over you. We're not just here to preach. We're here to watch, and we're here to say, uh-uh, you can't do that. You can't go that direction. You know, if somebody were to take a whip in the hand and whip you, and whip you to heaven, I say, praise the Lord. If you praise the Lord, I say, praise the Lord. <laughs> but you know, when we draw the hand of the whip, we don't correct, we don't watch, we don't see, we we'll allow anybody to do whatever they want to do. And these civil men, they creep in. They are not creeping to this church. The Lord will flush them out. The Spirit of God will flush them out. And firm, watchful leadership. I'm one of them. Thank God I'm one of them. Are you happy? Thank God, if I see them, I will flush them out. And if I cannot finish, I'll say, come, come, come. Come, my brother, come, my sister. Let's do this together. We'll flush them out in Jesus' name. Because these men and these women that come in, 
they spoil the vine. They'll destroy the ministry. This ministry will not be destroyed. We're coming now to, we're coming back to Jude. I'm looking at Jude chapter 1 and I'm looking at verse 4. In Jude it says in verse 4 that these men, look at what it says about them. It says, for there are certain men crept in unaware so before uh, of all was ordained unto this condemnation of godly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus. Jesus that bought them. Now he's bringing us to point number two. Point number two, the preach, deserters, damned for filthy perversion. We're coming to verse five. It says, I will therefore put you in remembrance. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Brothers and sisters, you know something? And there are times we come to the Bible study and what we're hearing is what we heard before. I will say, but we came to the Bible study today. Am I learning anything new? We need to be reminded of what we knew before. Now we're going to the states as well. And uh, the Bible study is coming to us from the state. And uh, you know, sometimes uh, the state people, they'll invite, uh, you know, everybody. And then we have to speak to everybody and teach everybody. And then somebody will say, well, they are spoiling the Bible study because now everything we're hearing today, we had that before isn't it wonderful that what you had before we can remind you answer me yes it's wonderful that's why it says in verse 5 i will therefore put you in remembrance though ye once knew this how that the lord having saved the people out of the land of egypt after what destroyed them that believed not they were saved but afterward they believed not they took their salvation for granted they took the grace of God for granted. They took their escape from Egypt. They took that for granted. And it says, they believed not again in the wilderness. He gave them water out of the rock. After that, they believed not. And he gave them manna to eat coming from heaven. And then it says, they believed not. The Amalekites were destroyed. Exodus chapter 17. Up to what? They believed not. He did many things before them and with them. And up to what? It says, they believed not. And that's backsliding. And then he goes on. And the angels which kept not their first estate. The angels which kept not their first nature and their forced inheritance, and their forced habitation. The angels that kept not their forced estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto judgment of the great day. You know, he spoke concerning the children of Israel, those who were believers, but they backslid. And then he spoke about angels, those ones, they didn't have the sinful nature, but eventually Lucifer deceived them, and they went back, he spoke about them. He's not going to speak about natural people, sinners, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over. Giving themselves over. Notice that. Not that anybody forced them, not that anybody compelled them. This is voluntary. If you steal, it is voluntary. If you go into prostitution, it is voluntary. If you go into sodomy, it is voluntary. If you go into drunkenness, it is voluntary. They gave themselves over. They gave their brains over. They gave their minds over. They gave their body over. They gave their privilege over. It says they gave themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh. You know what that means? A man going after a man. And committing fleshly sin. A lady going after another lady and committing fleshly sin. Abomination in the sight of the Lord. The world is becoming worse and worse and worse. People who are into sodomy, they used to hide it. They used to keep everything private. 
If a man was messing up with another man like himself, he will not let anybody know. And the other fellow messing up with him will not let anybody know. If a lady was messing up with a lady, they will not let anybody know. Let's be honest. And then eventually now, little by little, they began to come out of the closet. Now they show it on television. Now they show it on the internet. Now they write books about it. Now they're even saying that they want to get to the schools and tell the young people that it's another style of life. It's another way of life. They're not hiding it anymore. They used to hide it from some corporations. If you are like this, like this, and you have this kind of behavior, is aberrant behavior, a defiling behavior, damnable behavior, abominable behavior. They said, no, you will not come over here. You will not be in this company. You will not be this. But now, they are fighting for their rights. Will be anywhere. Will be anything. Will be officers. There's no shame anymore. And they're now getting married together. Hmm. Have you heard about that? I said, have you heard? And then they're looking for children, man and man. They get married together. They're looking for how to adopt a child. A woman and a woman get married together, looking for how to adopt a child. If you knew you needed a child, why didn't you go God's way? Let a man marry a woman. Let a woman marry a man. But he says, over here, they give themselves over unto strange flesh. And they are set forth, for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. There's judgment at the end of the life of sinning. I said there's judgment at the end of the life of sinning. And the only way to escape the judgment of God is to come out from among them. Look at these examples that were given. Number one, the children of Israel. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm reading here from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, moreover, brethren, I will not have you to be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ and with many of them them. Think about this now. They drank spiritual drink and they ate spiritual food. What's similar to our Lord's Supper today? They took all that, but then it says in verse 5, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Look up here for a moment. You know, for some people, it would have been better for them if they died immediately, they were born again. Look at these children of Israel. If the Lord were to take them away in Exodus chapter 15, when they sang to the Lord, when they sang praises to the Lord, He is my rock. He is my salvation. I will build him a habitation. All the armies of Pharaoh, they are sunk in the sea. He has saved us. Glorious God is glorious in holiness, is mighty in praise. If they died at that point, they would have gone to heaven. But they went on and on. And with thousands of them, God was not well pleased. Think about yourself. When you were born again, how was your conviction? When you were born again, how was your lifestyle? When you were born again, how was the righteousness in your life? How were you sober and serious? When you were born again and you experienced real salvation from the Lord, how were you at that time? How are you today? Are you still as fervent, as serious, as sober, as holy? A man of conviction, a woman of conviction, is the Lord saying, Oh, why didn't I take him away when he was converted? Why didn't I take her away when she was converted? I'm going to tell you something else. You know, there are people, when they are married, they are all right. You know, they have a wife that says, Daddy, we've not done quiet time. And then they do quiet time. And then if they are going somewhere, we have not prayed. We have not asked the Lord. They will pray and ask the Lord. 
If they go into their relatives and relatives will say something, you know, they will say, Daddy, we have not prayed. We have not sought the face of the Lord. Why don't we seek the face of the Lord? And because of that, they were kept on their toes. Because of that, they were spiritual. Because, because there was somebody telling them, helping them, living with them, and saying, no, we can't go that way. We can't go that way. Can't we ask God? Are we not going to inquire from God? Are we not going to pray to the Lord? But... The righteous wife has been taken away to heaven. And as the wife has been taken away to heaven, now the man is alone. And he slides back to what he used to be. And if he wants to do anything now, there's nobody to say, Daddy, we have not prayed. Daddy, we have not sought the Lord. Daddy, we have not checked up. Why don't we pray? And because of that, you know, the life is like now in shambles. Please pardon me. I need to teach you. I need to watch over you. There are some of us that you have lost your wife and you have children. And then as you want to get married, the children don't. What do the children do? They know nothing. They don't understand. You want to get married now so that there will still be a replacement of somebody that will say, Daddy, why do you do that? Daddy, should we do that? Daddy, should we pray? And then you want to get married and you tell your children, your children say no. You're not going to get married. Daddy, you know, a mother is your wife. Mother is gone. A mother is gone to glory. Mother is in heaven. Children, if you hinder this man from what you don't understand, you don't understand, this man is weak. This man cannot stand by himself. It was your mother that was helping him, keeping him on his toes. But now the woman is gone to heaven and you are not allowing your father to marry another person that will help him. You might discover they become worse than they were before. I pray that all these, our children, you release your fathers in Jesus' name. And maybe his mothers, you release your mothers in Jesus' name. So that by the grace of God, we will get to heaven. Somebody there wants to get to heaven. I said somebody there wants to get to heaven. You need somebody there to help you and watch over you. You need somebody there to check up on you and say, Hi about this. Have you read your Bible today? Have you prayed today? Have you checked up on the Lord? Has this happened? Has this happened? We need all that so that by the grace of God, this heaven, I know I'm getting there. I said I know I'm getting there. Ikeja people don't say want to go to heaven. I said, I know I'm getting there. Ikeja people will go to heaven in Jesus' name. Hey, look at this, look at this in verse 6. It says, now these things are our examples. And to the intent we shall not lost after evil things, as they also lost it, neither be ye idolaters, as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication. You will not commit fornication. As some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Like that, let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpent. Neither murmur ye, you will not murmur. Believers over here, don't murmur. Look up at me. I said, Believers here, don't murmur. Uh -huh. If you have been murmuring, it will stop tonight in Jesus' name. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these happened unto them for examples and they are reaching for our admonition, for our learning upon whom the ends of the world are come. Look at verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh his standeth, tell me, let him that thinketh his standard say it again. Let him that thinketh his standard take heed lest he fall. And so when your pastor wants you, don't say, Pastor, leave me alone. I know myself. I can watch over myself. I know how strong I am. I think you know how strong something was. And you know, the strong man was telling lies. You know how strong something was? If they bind me with this, then I'll be as weak as any other man. And they bound him, and then the Philistines upon you, something, and then he tore everything, and he said, you know, the power is always there. I'm different from all the other people. Just wait, it's a matter of moments, it's a matter of time. And then the Philistines upon you, something shook himself again, and, and this woman, Delilah, 
But you say you love me. And you are not telling me your mind. And you are deceiving me. Where is the secret of your power? And you see, those who are working for Satan, they do it every day, every day, every day. She pestered that man every day until she said, okay, let me tell you my mind. And he told her his mind and got lost. I pray it will not happen to you. Amen. Can you think of a man, a judge in Israel who judged the children of Israel for 20 years that he slept on the lap of a woman. What kind of sleep? That they brought somebody. The man had never had any shaving before of the head. And he shaved the head and the man did not wake up. The devil is terrible. I pray they will not play any trick on you. They will not make you go to sleep. You will keep awake. And you'll keep your life and keep your soul and keep your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. The feelings was upon you something. And then he woke up. He said, I will go and shake myself as at other times. You cannot take God for granted. You cannot make the grace of God to be in lasciviousness and think that God is still there. It's your errand boy. He will keep you. If you're going to be kept, you keep yourself away from those evil things and you will not backslide. You will not go astray. The Lord will keep you to the end in Jesus' name. I'm coming now to point number three. Defiled, despisers, defiant against fundamental pillars. Defiled, despisers, defiant against fundamental pillars. We're looking at a Jude. I'm reading now from verse 8. It says, likewise also, these feel the dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion and speak evil of dignitaries. It's talking now about these people. They're bent on doing evil. And, and you know how to, how to try and uh, do evil. I'm sure you're not going to do this, but this is what they do. First of all, there's a man in authority in their lives. There's a leader in authority in their lives. There's a preacher in authority in their lives. And they feared him. And because they fear him, he will say, don't go that way. Because of the level of authority, they will not go that way. And no other person can challenge them that way. No other person can say, you can't do that. As long as you are here, you won't do that. And once that authority figure says that, they check themselves. And they go back and say, oh, I'm sorry. But... They say, but I don't want this kind of authority. And this is the only person. It may be a father, biological father. It may be a mother, biological mother. It may be, uh, you know, somebody that God used to bring you into the kingdom. And it's not your pastor, but it's the one that brought you into the kingdom. And you respect him. And if he hears anything and says, no, you cannot do that, you check yourself. Or it may be a pastor, your local pastor, that says, come, I'm hearing something about you. You cannot go that way. And immediately you check yourself. That authority figure in your life, the devil will tell you, you know, you're in bondage to this authority figure. You don't have a mind of your own. You can't go the direction you want to go. You can't say what you want to say. You can't eat what you want to eat. And you can't have friends like you want to have friends. And so, what's the solution? How are you going to be free? The way to be free, destroy the authority of that man. Because it's the only one that can check you. It's the only one that can say, no, that can't happen. No, that will not happen. Once you destroy his authority, how do you do that? You begin to disobey him. If he says, no, you can't go that way, you may not talk, but you go that way and see what he will do. And then he'll call you and say, what did I tell you? And then you are just looking at him. So, okay, don't do that again. And the way to be free from authority is to do that again is to disobey and disobey and disobey until the table turns 
and everything shifts. You used to be afraid of him, now he's afraid of you. And if you want to do something, because the table has turned, instead of you being afraid of him, he's wondering, how do I tell him now? Because I told him the other one, he didn't accept. I told him the other one didn't accept. Already he has overcome that authority. He is now in authority, but is a servant that comes over the master, and that man eventually may be lost. I pray you'll not be lost. So, these people, what did they do? Look at verse 8 again. Likewise, these filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh. If they defile the flesh, there's somebody in authority, somebody in dominion who is going to correct them, who is going to challenge them. And then it says, they despise dominion. They despise dominion. And what's that? They are defiant, disobedient, openly disobedient, openly defiant, so that the only one that will save them will not have any voice anymore and they'll be lost. I pray it will not happen to you in Jesus' name. You know what? In our church, by the grace of God, when we started, you know, the pastor used to say, you can't do that. And then we shrink. We go back, I'm sorry that I went that way. And then we're afraid. If you do that, we will discipline you. And we were afraid of that discipline. And then they used to tell us, they say, deeper life, you make your pastor a God. Deeper life, you make your pastor a God. Deeper life, you make your pastor a God. And they kept on repeating, repeating, repeating that until somebody woke up and said, uh-uh, that's true. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I have a Bible. I have a conscience. I have the spirit of God. Am I obeying this man? Am I, you know, he says, see now, I see now, stand up, I stand up. And then little by little, deliberately, and it is a, it's program, it's programming. We call it conditioning. That he says, this is not right. The Bible says that be not in equal yoke together with some believers. And that's exactly what that man is going to do. And then the Bible says, obey them that have the rule over you. And then we deliberately disobey until the table turned. That maybe your pastor, your local pastor does not have any kind of backbone to say, my brother, how can you go that way? My sister, how can you go that way? Because now the authority figure is gone. And it is a way to ruin the church. It's a way to ruin your life. I pray that we'll come back to the right level in Jesus' name. That's what our teenagers do to get out of the authority of their parents. That's what the students do to get out of the authority of the teachers. That's what the country does to get away from the authority of those who are ruling, who are leading. And I pray that all that will change so that you will not be lost in Jesus' name. And let's come back to this. Look at that verse again. Likewise, these feel the dreamers. They're dreamers. They're ambitious. And they want to get here and get there, but they're filthy, they're backsliding, they're abominable, they're adulterers, and they're fornicators. And it says they defile the flesh, they despise dominion, and tell me, tell me together, one, two, three, go. They speak evil of dignitaries. Uh, you know, you, you find that that's what happens in the world. Speak evil of dignitaries so that students will take laws into their hands. They control the school, not the principal, not the teachers. And so that the citizens will control the country, not the person on top there. If the person on top, if he drinks water, they write about it. If the person on top there, if he has, uh, you know, any medical challenge and he goes to a clinic over here, they write about it. It's like, you know, everything, there's, there's no authority figure. And they despise dominion. And when it happens like that in the church, the society can not lead us right, church cannot lead us right, Bible cannot lead us right, and God cannot lead us right, and we despise dignitaries, and then we oppose all dominion, we are lost. That's how the churches are lost. That's how the churches, the dominations, that's how they crumble, and your church will not crumble. Yeah. 
so that by the grace of God, this word of God will still be established in this our church. And then there'll be a leader in every local church. There'll be a figure in every family. There'll be somebody in every community that we will look up to. And by the grace of God, if he corrects us according to the word of God, we'll obey in Jesus' name. It is for our good, it's for our protection, it's for our preservation. It's so that we will not go astray. And I thank God for the people here tonight. The way I see you, you will not go astray. The word of God will have impact and power in your life in Jesus' name. Hey, look, look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. He's saying that these uh, defiled uh, people and these uh, human, you know, men and women that are defiling themselves, that are despising dominion, that are speaking evil against dignitaries, they are not even learning from the angels. That the angel when he disputed with uh, Satan concerning the body of Moses he didn't have any really accusation he didn't, uh, he couldn't uh, insult him, but you know the people, they insult leadership the way they want. The people they go against leadership the way they want. And he says they are not learning the lesson that they ought to learn look at verse 10, but these speak evil of those things they know not. The things they don't understand, they speak evil of them. They speak evil of restitution. They speak evil of holiness. They speak evil of God. They speak evil of Christ. And they speak evil of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, they think nobody can challenge them. They can blaspheme openly. They think nobody will challenge them. It says, but these speak evil of those things they know not. But what they know naturally as brute bees in those things, they also corrupt themselves. I pray you'll not be like that. We're coming to Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two, and we're reading from verse ten. Second Peter chapter two, verse ten. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. They walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, and they despise. Tell me there. They despise. Tell me there. Brothers and sisters, look up here. You see, there's government. And God recognizes the government. And when in the country, it's like, you know, it's now the normal thing to speak against the police, speak against the army, and speak against the government, and speak against governors. And there are people who say they are Christians. They say they are believers. They do not understand that the spirit of the world is a spirit of rebellion. They will use their ability to write, and their ability to draw, and their ability to do whatever to make a caricature of the people in leadership in the government. It's a sign of backsliding. It's an abomination in the sight of the Lord. And when they've done that in the public, they bring it to the church. They bring it to the church. And they also speak evil of the government and administration in the church and the leadership in the church. The conscience is dead and the life is not the life of the Christian. Bible apart, their lives apart. Bible study apart, their character apart. The Bible study does not affect their action, does not control their lives. And it says, chiefly them that walk after the flesh, not after the spirit, in the lust of uncleanness, they despise government. Then it says, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. And in fact, they'll tell you, they say, you know what? I feel bold. I feel courageous. And I feel fearless. That kind of fearlessness will drive you to hell. I feel courageous to challenge leadership in the government and leadership in the church and leadership anywhere. I feel courageous to say my mind. 
that kind of courage will lead you astray. It says over here, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Look at verse 11, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not really an accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. I pray you will not be destroyed. They speak evil of the things that they understand not. And shall utterly tell me in what? In their corruption. That kind of boldness is corruption. That kind of fearlessness is corruption. That kind of defiance against authority and against leadership is defiance. And it says such people, they will perish. I pray you will not perish. And then you know what they do? We're looking at Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 30. And we're looking at verse 9. Isaiah chapter 30. And I'm reading here from verse 9. Isaiah 30. We're reading from verse 9. Here it is. It tells us in the word of God that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Have you seen people like that? I said, have you ever seen anybody like that? They will not hear the word of the Lord. Look at verse 10. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. But speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. That's the religious world. The religious world, they have their Bibles. They, they know that holiness is there. They know God is holy. They know heaven is holy. They know the Bible is a holy Bible. They know the angels are holy. They know that if you're going to get to heaven, there must be holiness. They know. But they tell their preachers, if you want us to keep on coming, if you want us to be giving offering, if you want us to be, you know, supporting you, don't tell us about uh, that uh, kind of holiness. And uh, if you want to hear about holiness, you know where to go. Now go there, You're over here. We don't want anything about righteousness and holiness. And I pray people already know us for holiness. I pray that they'll keep on knowing us as holiness church. And that this word of God will stand on it forever until Christ comes in Jesus' name. But it says there are people that will tell the seers, see not. And the prophets prophesy not. Don't prophesy any good thing to us. Prophesy smooth, smooth things. Tell us, God bless you. God bless you. Even though you are in sin, God bless you. Even though you are backsliding, God bless you. Even though you are blaspheming, God bless you. Even though you go into polygamy, God bless you. Even though you go to marry an unbeliever, God bless you. Whatever it is you are doing, God bless you. And that's what we want. But that's the way of error. That's the way of deception. And that's the way of destruction. And I pray the Lord will rescue and deliver us in Jesus' name. But the Lord is now saying that we need to watch. That's why he's giving us all this. He's telling us that we ought to watch. That's why Jude tells us, we're looking at Jude now chapter 1. Jude chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 3. Jude chapter 1. Beloved, I pray that we remain beloved in the sight of the Lord in Jesus' name. Beloved, because we are saved. Beloved, because we are sanctified. Beloved, because we are preserved in the truth. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. Necessary for me to write unto you. It was compulsory for me to write unto you. It was compelling for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should, how do you contend? That you should tell me out loud. Earnestly contend. For the faith, not against the faith. Not against the faith. There are people that contend against the faith. They want to have their way. They want to go into the way of error. They want to silence the truth being preached. And they want to silence a bold preacher preaching. Therefore, they contend against the faith. But the warning we're given, the watchfulness we're called to, is that you should Honestly, contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. We will do that. 
And then he tells us if we do that, look at uh, verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. In verse 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. It will keep you from falling. If we take heed according to the word of God, if we take the word of God seriously, and any, if we're making any mistake, if we're going astray, we come to the Lord and say, Lord, I didn't know this. Little by little by little, I was leading back to this position. Oh, Lord, the fire I had in days gone by, and the zeal I had in days gone by, and the conviction I had in days gone by, restore it unto me. There's restoration tonight. And then now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence, the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord will keep you. Amen. The Lord will keep you. Amen. We'll get to heaven together. Let's bring back all the great qualities we used to have and the way we fought against sin and we fought for the truth. Honestly, contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Those good days are coming back from tonight. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here am I, Lord, here am I, Lord, here am I. I need to get back to that conviction, to the moment of conviction, and I need to get back to this fiery kind of a, a lifestyle that will fight against the truth and stand for the truth of the word of God. I will not be defiant against authority. I will not be defiant against uh, constitutional authority, either in the government or in the church. I will stand for the truth. And if you have a good wife watching over you, praise the Lord. You have a good husband watching over you, praise the Lord. You have a good uh, pastor watching over you, praise the Lord. You have a good leader there watching over you, praise the Lord. Don't defy and don't, uh, you know, uh, shake, uh, shake off the authority over you. Say, praise the Lord. I have somebody who loves me enough to tell me you cannot do that, you cannot go that way. I want to stand on this word of the Almighty God. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will keep you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.